Chapter 5 Queen's College One day, Marilla said, Anne, your new teacher, Miss Stacy, spoke to me yesterday. She says you must study for the examinations for Queen's College in two years' time. Then if you do well, you can study at Queen's in Charlottetown for a year. And after that, you'll be a teacher. Oh, Marilla, I'd love to be a teacher. But won't it be very expensive? That doesn't matter, Anne. When Matthew and I adopted you three years ago, we decided to look after you as well as we could. Of course we'll pay for you to study. So in the afternoons, Anne and some of her friends stayed late at school, and Miss Stacy helped them with the special examination work. Diana didn't want to go to Queen's, so she went home early, but Gilbert stayed. He and Anne still never spoke, and everybody knew that they were enemies, because they both wanted to be first in the examination. Secretly, Anne was sorry that she and Gilbert weren't friends, but it was too late now. For two years, Anne studied hard at school. She enjoyed learning, and Miss Stacy was pleased with her. But she didn't study all the time. In the evenings and at weekends, she visited her friends, or walked through the fields with Diana, or sat talking to Matthew. Your Anne is a big girl now. She's taller than you, Rachel Lynde told Marilla one day. You're right, Rachel, said Marilla in surprise. And she's a very good girl now, isn't she? She doesn't get into trouble these days. I'm sure she helps you a lot with the housework, Marilla. Yes, I don't know what I'd do without her, said Marilla, smiling. And look at her. Those beautiful grey eyes and that red-brown hair. You know, Marilla, I thought you and Matthew made a mistake when you adopted her. But now I see I was wrong. You've looked after her very well. Well, thank you, Rachel, replied Marilla, pleased. That evening, when Matthew came into the kitchen he saw that his sister was crying. What's the matter? he asked, surprised. You haven't cried since... Well, I can't remember when. It's just... Well, I was thinking about Anne, said Marilla. I'll... I'll miss her when she goes away. When she goes to Queen's, you mean? Yes, but she can come home at weekends on the train. I'll still miss her, said Marilla sadly. In June, the Avonlea boys and girls had to go to Charlottetown to take their examinations. Oh, I do hope that I've done well, Anne told Diana when she arrived back at Green Gables. The examinations were very difficult, and I've got to wait for three weeks before I know. Three weeks? I'll die! Anne wanted to do better than Gilbert, but she also wanted to do well for Matthew and Marilla. That was very important to her. Diana was the first to hear the news. She ran into the kitchen at Green Gables and shouted, Look, Anne, it's in Father's newspaper. You're first, with Gilbert, out of all the students on the island. Oh, how wonderful. Anne took the paper with shaking hands and saw her name at the top of the list of 200. She could not speak. Well now, I knew it, 
said Matthew with a warm smile. You've done well, I must say, Anne, said Marilla, who was secretly very pleased. For the next three weeks, Anne and Marilla were very busy. Anne needed new dresses to take to Charlottetown. The evening before she left, she put on one of her new dresses to show Matthew. Marilla watched the happy young face. She remembered the strange, thin little child with her sad eyes who arrived at Green Gables five years ago, and she started crying quietly. Marilla, why are you crying? asked Anne. I was just thinking of you when you were a little girl, said Marilla. And you're going away now. And I'll be lonely without you. Anne took Marilla's face in her hands. Marilla, nothing will change. Perhaps I'm bigger and older now, but I'll always be your little Anne. And I'll love you and Matthew and Green Gables more every day of my life. Marilla could not say what she felt, like Anne, but she could show it. She put her arms round her girl and held her close to her heart. And so for the next year, Anne lived in Charlottetown and went to college every day. She sometimes came home at weekends, but she had to study hard. Some of her Avonlea friends were at Queen's too, and also her enemy, Gilbert Blythe. Anne saw that he often walked and talked with other girls. She felt sure that she and Gilbert could have some interesting conversations, but she didn't want to be the first to speak to him, and he never looked at her. There were examinations at the end of the college year in May. Anne studied very hard for them. I'd love to get the first place, she thought. Or perhaps I could get the Avery Prize. This was a prize for the student who was best at English writing. And Anne knew she was good at that. The Avery Prize paid for a free place for four years at Redmond College, one of the best colleges in Canada. When news of the examinations came, Anne waited for her friends to tell her. She heard shouting. It's Gilbert! He's the first! She felt ill. But just then she heard another shout. Anne Shirley's got the Avery! And then all the girls were round her, laughing and shouting. Matthew and Marilla will be pleased, thought Anne. Now I can go on studying and they won't have to pay. Chapter 6 Matthew and Marilla But when she arrived back at Green Gables, Anne knew at once that something was wrong. Matthew looked much older than before. What's the matter with him? Anne asked Marilla. He's had some heart trouble this year, replied Marilla. He really isn't well. I'm worried about him. And you're not looking well, Marilla, said Anne. Now you must rest while I do the housework. Marilla smiled tiredly at Anne. It's not the work. It's my head. It often hurts behind my eyes. I must see the doctor about it soon. But another thing, Anne. Have you heard anything about the church bank? I heard it was having a difficult time. All our money is in that bank. I know Matthew's worried about it. The next morning, a letter came for Matthew. 
Marilla saw his gray face and cried, What's the matter, Matthew? Anne, who was bringing an armful of flowers into the kitchen, saw his face too. Suddenly, Matthew fell to the ground. Anne dropped her flowers and ran to help Marilla. Together, they tried everything, but it was too late. Matthew was dead. It was his heart, said the doctor, who arrived a little later. Did he have any bad news suddenly? The letter, cried Anne. Shall I see what's in it? Oh, Marilla, look! The church bank has had to close down. Your money and Matthew's has all gone. Everybody in Avonlea was sorry to hear that Matthew was dead. For the first time in his life, Matthew Cuthbert was an important person. At first, Anne couldn't cry. But then she remembered Matthew's smiling face when she told him about the Avery Prize. Suddenly, she started crying and couldn't stop. Marilla held her in her arms, and they sobbed together. Crying can't bring him back, whispered Marilla. We'll have to learn to live without him, Anne. In the next few weeks, Anne and Marilla worked hard together on the farm and in the house. Everybody in Avonlea was very kind to them, but it was a sad time. One day Marilla said, I'll miss you when you go to Redmond College, Anne. What are the other Avonlea students going to do? Some of them are going to teach, and some are going to stay at Queen's. Gilbert's going to teach at Avonlea School, isn't he? Anne didn't reply. So Marilla went on, He's very tall and good-looking now, don't you think? Like his father, John, when he was younger. You know, John and I were very good friends years ago. Anne looked up, interested. What happened? Why didn't you... Well, we had a fight about something. He asked me to be friends again, but I couldn't forgive him. Later I was sorry, but he didn't speak to me again. Perhaps we... Oh, well, it was a long time ago. The next day, Marilla went to see the doctor. When she came back, she looked very tired and ill. What did the doctor say? asked Anne worriedly. He says... I mustn't read or write, and I must wear glasses. Then my head won't hurt. But if I'm not very careful, I'll be blind in six months. For a minute, Anne was silent. Then she said firmly, Then you must be careful, Marilla. Think how terrible it is to be blind. But how lucky you've got a free place at Redmond College. I can't give you any money, you see. All our money's gone, and I can't work now. I think I'll have to sell the farm and go and live with Rachel Lynde. And poor Marilla sobbed wildly. That night, Anne sat alone in her bedroom. She thought and thought for some time. And then she smiled. When she went to bed, she knew what she was going to do. The next day, she explained it all to Marilla. You can't sell Green Gables. It's our home. Just listen. I've planned everything. I'm not going to Redmond College. It's too far away. I'm going to teach in one of the village schools near here. Then 
I can live there during the week and come home at weekends to look after you. Diana's father will use our fields and pay us for them, and so we'll have some money. You see? Oh, Anne, I'll be all right if you're here, but you must go to Redmond if you want to study. Redmond College doesn't matter, laughed Anne. I'm going to study at home in the evenings. And I'm going to be a really good teacher. That's better than anything. Marilla shook her head and tried not to cry. You're a good girl, Anne. Now we can keep Green Gables. A few days later, Rachel Lind came to the farm. Do you know, she said, that Gilbert isn't going to be the Avonlea teacher now. Isn't he? cried Anne. Why not? When he heard that you wanted to be near Marilla, he decided to teach at a school in another village, so you can be the Avonlea teacher now. Oh, said Anne, surprised. That's... that's very kind of him. And that day, when she saw Gilbert by the river, she stopped him and held out her hand. Gilbert, she said shyly, I... I want to thank you. It's very good of you. If I'm the Avonlea teacher, I can help Marilla much more at home. I'm happy to help you, Anne said Gilbert. He smiled and held her hand firmly. Are we going to be friends now? Have you forgiven me for calling you carrots? Anne laughed. <laughs> I forgave you a long time ago. I'm sure we're going to be very good friends, Anne. Can I walk home with you? And when Anne came into the Green Gables kitchen, Marilla said, You look very happy, Anne. Was that Gilbert who was with you just now? Yes, replied Anne, her face red. Gilbert and I've decided to be friends. Oh, Marilla, I think life is going to be good for all of us. We'll have to work hard, but we'll be happy. And we'll keep our dear old green gables. What could be better than that?